during worship, I, I saw a prophetic stream. It was glorious, brilliantly bright and blue, and it was a flowing stream, and out of the stream, now it wasn't water, it was like powerful electricity through the skies. And as it was going through, it was releasing out of it. It had streams coming out the side, and they were being prophetic released words that God was releasing into all over the world. Because we are right now in a prophetic release tremendously. That's how things are moving. And one of the things in the prophetic release is what's bringing the more of the release is the worship, the true heart of worship. The true heart of worship. When a person doesn't have a true heart of worship, they miss it. They miss it. Because they're too busy looking at themselves. Or what God is going to do for me. It's not what he's going to do for me. It's not what he's going to do for you. It's what he's going to do for his kingdom. Amen. So that carnal mindset has got to be destroyed. And I'm telling you, God is trying to destroy the carnal mindset. He's trying to bring us out of that place because it's so much, people are in so much bondage globally because of the carnal mind. They're still allowing their flesh to rule their spirit instead of the spirit ruling their flesh. Their desires and their emotions and their pleasures are still leading them instead of the spirit. Putting things in divine order. How many know there's things that you need to do and you haven't done it yet? Well, who keeps telling you that you need to do it and you haven't done it yet? God. Does everybody understand that? The longer you delay, the longer you lose his trust. He's wanting us now to move quicker. He can't depend on individuals that are still being led by their emotions, their pleasures. We are moving rapidly, rapidly. There's a tremendous move. There's a prophetic release. There's not only the prophetic stream, but there's a, prof there's a stream of life that's grabbing hold of people. There's going to be an infiltration. Some of the most ungodliness and unholy people are going to become some of the righteous Some of us going to be in a lot of shame to some of the body. But it's only God that can do that. For all the things that we've been granted and, and known and everything, we are all accountable no matter what. <clears throat> oh, happy days. What our eyes are beholding right now, and we've heard this before, and I, I it's not that I... We've got to be reminded. Amen? We've got to be reminded of so many things that's going on. There is a battle right now. Um, the battle between Elijah and Jezebel is still going on. Okay? Jezebel is a promoter of uh, feminism. Big time. And in this arena of feminism, you're finding, and, and it's, it, these are spirits, amen? It's got really nothing to do with a woman, but it does have to do with, because they're moving where women are beginning to act like men and so forth. And, and in this, there's a, a, and this is a principality. Then there's the, another principality called racism. And then you have the principality, which is called Moloch, which is promoting the death of children. These three major principalities have been controlling and ruling this country and globally. Right now, there's a battle between Elijah and Jezebel. Big time. This battle. Remember, Jezebel served Moloch. She served all the demonic forces. She was a servant. And we know that the harlot will become like the Jezebel with the blood of saints, the cup of abominations. We are battling with this right now. And 
It is the presence of God that is so vitally important. Because there are people out there right now that know the Word of God and are falling. See, the enemy has prevented people from coming and gathering and assembling. Or they're not getting the anointing. And the battle's so strong out there that they're easily being drained. Does everybody understand that? The draining is intense. The battle is intense. And it's going to stay like this for a little bit. In fact, it may get worse. That's why it's so vitally important about getting refreshed and getting refilled and getting reconnected. Amen? Because knowing the Word and not standing on the Word <laughs> isn't going to help you. That's why the Word says you must be a doer of the Word. And God is trying to bring things in priority so that things are not stolen like His presence. I'm telling you, there's a tremendous draining going on. You can do all the stuff you want out there to try and get refreshed and rested. But there's only one place that you can get it. Amen? You know, remember, just because you don't feel good doesn't mean you're sick. And even if you're sick, God said, I'll raise you up. I've come to the conclusion that a lot of chlorine and sun will help kill this. <laughs> it brings you rest. <laughs> So if I may get darker, you know what I'm battling with. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we have victory. Right now, what's really, we, we are re seeing, and we've talked about restraints. Amen? Remember, the enemy doesn't want us to assemble because without God's presence, there's no revelation. You can try and force revelation. You can pray for revelation. But he releases it in his presence. That's how it begins. And it doesn't mean it's going to manifest right there. You can have the manifestation days later. He says, my people lose their restraints because of lack of revelation. This is not carnal revelation. This is not illumination. This is not light bulb. This is revelation when God speaks and you know it's his voice and something's imparted and changed in you. Amen? Amen. So what we're seeing right now is there are no restraints on wickedness. Amen? We are seeing these are, there's no restraints there. And this is what we're talking about. There's no restraints there. Now you got to ask yourself, where's your restraints? Are you restraining yourself from false comforts? Are you restraining yourself from false desires? Are you restraining yourself from the pleasures of the world? Are you compromising the fulfillment that only can come from him. No restraints of wickedness. 2 Timothy chapter 3. They have no restraints. They say whatever they want. They do whatever they feel like. Violent. It's just complete release and works of the flesh. No restraints. Second Timothy three start one. We've we ought to know this by now. But these are people with no restraints. Is everybody there? Verse one. Let's speak it. But know this that in the last days, hello, are we in the last days? Amen. It says perilous times will come. Hello. <laughs> that needs to be like bold. I don't know if people really see this yet. It says that for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without any control over self, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Well, this is described the whole Democratic Party. And half of the world or more. 
It's not just the Democratic Party. There are people in the Republican Party that are still acting the same way. They're called rhinos. Verse 4. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. What do they have? They have a form of godliness. In other words, they are worshiping another doctrine. But denying the power which is only in Christ. Christ is the only one with power. And from such people turn what? Turn away. For this sort are those who creep in households and make captives of gullible women and men, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts and desires of pleasure. They're always learning. You know, knowledge has increased so much that people are about to explode with knowledge. They're actually regurgitating it. Because they're not putting it to use. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, not able to take the knowledge, interpret it correctly to put it to use. Now, as Janus and Jebus resisted Moses, so did he also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. These are human vessels with wicked entities of demonic realm. They entice to promote, provoke, and harm the righteous. There is no revelation of God as their creator. They have no restraints of wickedness. None. Their fulfillment is the fulfillment of the flesh. Proverbs 29. In verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off what? Restraints. Wow. But happy is he who keeps the law. No restraints, no revelation of light, truth, or Christ. And what has been given is removed. Does everybody understand that? I know people right now that know Christ, but they're in a backslidden condition. Why? Because they think that they can just know it by the Word of God by themselves. No assembling. No being refreshed in the presence of God. And their households are out of order. Is everybody okay? Second Thessalonians 2. No restraints. This is what we're seeing. Does God want to rescue them? Yes. It's all over the world, not just United States. But United States is vital to the world, just as Israel is vital to the world. The world looks to the United States as guidance. The United States looks to Israel as guidance. The United States and Israel right now are unified, unified like they've never been before. In fact, there's a song coming out between them both prophetically. In verse 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together 
We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day of the Lord will, will not come unless the what? The falling away. So you're going to see the falling away. Unless the falling away comes first, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Well, we're seeing a bunch of them right now all over the world. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things and how, and now you know what is restraining that it may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So we are actually, the presence of God is actually restraining wickedness because they can't restrain themselves. They have no restraints. Now think about when the body of Christ, the bride, is removed. What is it going to be like here? You ain't seen nothing. There will be no home safe. There will be no family safe. People will try to pay for uh, protection with food and whatever. People will arm themselves. There will be total chaos, shootings, death. And, of course, the mark of the beast will have a false play of rescue. In verse 8, and it says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception, which we see incredible right now, among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's happening little bit by little bit, but God is still giving them opportunity to turn. I think prison is the only place that they're going to be able to turn, to be honest with you. The jail of salvation. Salvation saloons. <laughs> we are in the falling away, and it will increase because Jesus is coming soon. And his wrath will be released to the earth immediately after his bride is removed. And then there will be no more restraining of evil. And Matthew 24 So if people don't understand the deception of the plague and all the other stuff that's going on right now, wait, wait till you see what happens. And the enemy, the enemy has people convinced, well, I'm saved. I'm okay. Oh, boy. I don't want to be in their shoes when they get before the Lord. Hi, Lord, I'm saved. Who are you? <laughs> Why did you hide what I gave you and not use it? Why did you forsake to assemble? When I told you, you came against my word. You practice lawlessness. Verse 3. Now, as Jesus said in the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age of grace. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one does what? Deceive you. Man, that's what I want to yell out in public. Satan's greatest weapon is deception. I'm waiting for somebody to ask me where my mask is, and they're all going to hear it. Where's your mask? <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to ask me that. 
It's like they don't want they don't, uh, the news media, nobody asks who Q is yet. Once they ask who Q is, he's going to let them know. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled of these things. Must come to what? Pass, but the end's not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and, these, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. I think a lot of people are in sorrow right now. With all the afflictions and everything, no jobs, famines, that's famine. We're in this right now. You got pestilence, you got famines, you got wars, you got civil rights, you got rioters, you've got terrorists, you've got all kinds. This is all what's happening right now. We are in the beginning of sorrows, but almost the end of it. I would say we're about 90% through. It says then they're going to deliver you up to tribulation and then attempt to kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Listen, you're hated right now. We don't have to wait. Verse 10. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Did you ever notice, have you noticed that the atmosphere right now is very difficult? There's irritation. You can sense hatred. I'm telling you, I said to them this morning, if I don't get in God's presence, I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God I don't live in Washington. I mean, maybe I should go to Washington. <laughs> Verse 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow what? Cold. That's what's happening right now. You are battling so much to keep the love of God going. <clears throat> but he who endures to the end will be saved. He who endures to the end will be saved. Only those that endure to the end and maintain a pure heart, clean hands, fruits of righteousness will be removed from the earth with the bride. And it says in this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. Then the end will come. He who endures to the end will be saved. <laughs> Again, there's much more persecution to come. Romans 8. Why? Because you see no restraints on people. Well, we're seeing some restraints are called handcuffs. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have, to, I have to really hold myself back from doing citizen's arrests, you know. <laughs> I need to bring a bag of handcuffs and get out there and start handcuffing people. You're under arrest. For what? Being stupid. <laughs> it's a crime against the kingdom. <laughs> Romans 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So if they're walking according to the flesh, they got no restraints, do they? Hmm. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned it, sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say requirement, of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So there is a fulfillment of requirement to make it into heaven. 
For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh because they have no restraints. Hello? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. You know, you've got to have restraints to have the mind of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Ooh. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. For the law, carnal mind is death, and the spiritual mind is life and peace. And again, the carnal mind cannot be converted. It must be taken dominion over. Amen? So many people are still trying to convert their mind. They need to unscrew it. Amen? Stick a rag in its mouth. Maybe light it. I don't know. Burn that tongue till you get a new one. Hallelujah. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. No revelation in the flesh, no restraints of wickedness. Even a believer will begin to promote wickedness because they're submitting to their flesh because there's no restraints. 1 Timothy 4. I don't know if you, well, anyways, I was watching this, I guess the House of Representatives was investigating, uh, actually just persecuting uh, Barr. And man, they were so disrespectful to this guy. I mean, it was just disgusting. And I'm like, man, dude, stand up, throw something at him, do something, you know? I mean, it was just, and he just, he was just calm as could be. I mean, he did put them in their place in a couple of things. And finally, one of the representatives said, look, you brought this guy in here to question him. That's all you're doing is splurting all your stuff out. You're not asking him any questions or giving him an opportunity to answer them. So what it is is just a play. It's so that they can release all of these lies into the atmosphere to the American public. They're not interested in anything he's got to say. They won't let him speak. So my whole thing is, is why are you showing up? It's like, that. Where's, where's the boldness? Where's the boldness of righteousness? Where's the boldness of holiness? Where's the righteous anger? I mean, it kind of baffles me. How can policemen stand back just because the governor says stand down when people are being abused? Man, they should have all been out there. Who cares? Fire me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these are human beings that are being abused by demon-possessed individuals. It's disgusting to me. First Timothy 4. Is everybody there? Starting at verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And that's what they're promoting. The media promotes it. Amen? I don't know if you saw where even the teachers' unions are promoting it. See, they get funded. Now, what Trump is trying to do is saying, okay, look, and if you're not going to send your kids to school, then pay your kids to go to another one. Give the money that you've collected and all their taxes and give it back to the people so they can send their kids to school. You think they're going to approve that? Heck no. Do you know that... Uh, Bank of America gave Black Lives Matter a billion dollars. Man, if I didn't have any, I got one mortgage with them. If I could pull it out, I would. Same thing with Walmart. They gave them also money. And they also fund Planned Parenthood. This is all deception. But you got to remember, this has been going on for thousands of years. All this has been in place. This is finally, finally Standing up to expose all of this. This is not going to be an easy battle. They've held positions. you got anti-Americans that live in America that hold seats and positions in the political arena that are billionaires and millionaires and trillionaires that have businesses, that have power, they have money, but they ain't got Jesus. And only through Jesus will we prevail. 
Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Color me excited. Now, the Spirit expressly says that many will fall. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. I mean, think about it. These individuals are abusing children, murdering them, eating them, and everything else. There is no conscience. Because they are bodies with demonic entities in them. We are fighting the Nephilim race. The fallen angel race that had taken on form in bodies. They're demons. They're spirits. Remember, this is not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. Forbidding to marry and commending to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. Nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is in of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in what purity or holiness. Again, schools no longer educate, they indoctrinate. I'm telling you, this is why you see what's going on there. Colleges no longer educate, they indoctrinate. They indoctrinate their doctrines. Perverting a search for revelation because they're preventing it. Because everybody got it. So they put them on a doctrine of perversion. Anything that's against Christ is perverted. So they're following all of these doctrines which are preventing them from revelation. So all of these colleges and all of these other places and things to that degree, they're constantly, because of these doctrines that are deceiving people, communism, socialism. So these kids are out there fighting for communism and socialism. Well, they need to go over to countries where it's happening and then come back and tell me if that's what you want to fight for. Instead of believing these professors that all of these deans in high-paid colleges are putting in because they've infiltrated because they're anti-American. I've been seeing this since I've been a kid. A couple weeks ago. I've been watching this. I went to college for a little bit. When you go to college in Jilla, you can't tell. You know what I'm saying? But when you go to college out here, you can tell. I knew these professors. I was an addict. So were they. Heck, you can get A's for a certain amount of dope. I mean, it was crazy. But they are socialistic. But I didn't even know what socialistic was then. I was just out to get a good grade in drugs. That didn't last long, though. Hallelujah. Crazy. Things that are just crazy. We're in 90 days. Our preparation for 90 days is for November. September will be tough, but November will be the worst. Does everybody get it? November will be very difficult because there's going to be so much stuff. Ezekiel 7.
But thank God for the anointing. Without the anointing, man, we couldn't do it. Ezekiel 7, verse 5. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it together. Ezekiel 7, verse 5. Thus says the Lord God, a disaster, a singular disaster, behold, it has come. And the end has come. The end has come. It has dawned for you. Behold, it has come. Doom has come to you. You who dwell in the land, the time has come. A day of trouble is near, and not of rejoicing in the mountains. Now upon you I will soon pour out my fury and spend my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will repay you for all your abominations. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will repay you according to your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord God who does what? Who strikes. Behold the day, behold it has come. Doom has gone out. The rod has blasphemed. Pride has budded. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, none of their multitude, none of them, nor shall be wailing for them. The time has come, the day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is on their whole multitude. Wow. For the seller shall not return to what has been sold, though he may still be alive. For the vision concerns the whole multitude, and it shall not turn back. No one will strengthen himself who lives in what? Iniquity. In other words, this is for people who are living and promoting a life of lawlessness. Amen? They promote lawlessness. Amen? Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 32. No restraints. Verse 22. 32, 22. Glory. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Deuteronomy 32, 22. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn to the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap disasters on them. I will spend my arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger. Devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction, I will also send against them the teeth of beasts with poison of serpents of the dust. The sword shall destroy outside, and there shall be a terror within. For young men and virgin, the nursing child with the man of gray hairs, I, will ha I would have said, I will dash them in pieces. I will make the memory of them to cease from among men. Had I not feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should misunderstand, lest they should say, our hand is high, and it is not the Lord who has done this. Very powerful. One of the things I've been seeing as we've been praising and worship is the arrows of the Lord going. And when he brought me to this, I said, well, because it says he spent my arrows. These are arrows of judgment. He is bringing judgment in these places. There are so many things that are going to happen. Uh, on behind closed doors that people don't understand and don't see. But there are places that are being destroyed. There are people that are being arrested. There are businesses. There are CEOs that are stepping down. You're going to find a lot of senators and congressmen and so forth. All of this. See, they believe that they're, they have amnesty towards things. They're above the law. But right now, they're changing the laws behind closed doors in courts. Things are changing. Everything's going to have to be done through the court system to change. 
there are more and more documents. One of the things I found myself praying is that there'd be an infiltration, not only a release of those who've been taken captive, but of the spoil, the wicked, and documentation of witness against them be released into the hands of the righteous because they're getting more and more and more. See, they've been trying to hide it and burn it and destroy it. I don't know if you heard about even China and the embassy. I mean, they began to destroy all their documentation because they know they're wrong, they're guilty. Evil. Pure evil. China's, the Communist Party of China is pure evil. Oh, hallelujah. My wife and I watched a, 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 a movie, and it was about the um, Iraq war that we went into with Bush. You know, and, and he's another evil one, proclaimed to be a Christian. And, uh, and I, don't re I don't know if you remember or not, but there was a, a, a family. One of his, the guy's wife was exposed as a, uh, um, she was a, a CIA agent. And they exposed her. And the reason why they exposed her is because her husband, who was also an ambassador, when they said that all of these nuclear things were going on and all of these purchases, he went over there because he communicated over there. He said there's no such thing there. And there were, all, there were these scientists that were willing to come over and testify. And they ended up murdering all of them. They never made it. One of the guys in the White House finally took the fall. And these people ended up winning the case. But all of this was nothing but a scam. There was no nuclear, there was no mass weapons or anything over there. It was all a lie. All a lie. It's amazing how people are just willing to murder people, you know. And, and, and all for power and money. All for power and money. Proverbs 23, I'm sorry. Proverbs 23. But it was quite interesting. It's called uh, Fair Game. Is everybody there? Proverbs 23, verse 1. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. In other words, make sure that that ruler is righteous. <laughs> Be careful you don't partake of his stuff. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. See, deceptive food promotes the flesh where there's no restraints. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings and fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is eat and drink, he says to you. But his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool. For he will despise the wisdom of your words. Do not remove the ancient landmark. These are also known as restraints. Nor enter the fields of the fatherless. For their redeemer is mighty. He will plead their cause against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Again, these landmarks are known as restraints. Restraints. People have taken off these restraints because they eat deceptive food. And Philippians 3. Hallelujah. <sighs> Philippians chapter 3. Verse 17. A 
that speak it. Brethren, join in, my, in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Think about that. Look at how many enemies of the cross of Christ are out there. It's tremendous. Why? They eat deceptive food and they have no restraints. They're the enemies of the cross. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on the things, earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Enemies of the cross. <laughs> wow. Again, they live among us. <laughs> Amen. They hold positions. They have no restraints. Isaiah 64. In verse 1. Let's speak it together. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence as fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things of which we did not look, you came down. The mountains shook at your presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, per perceived by the ear, nor have I seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, you rem who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways we continue, and we need to be what? Saved. But we all, like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter, and we are the work of your hand. Do not be furious, O Lord, nor remember iniquity forever. Indeed, please look, we are all your people. Again, they didn't call on the name of the Lord, nor stood themselves up to grab hold of them. They are individuals with no restraints. Now I'm going to close the First Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Glory. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Listen, without sanctification, there are no restraints. Amen. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but into holiness. Therefore, he rejects this, does not reject man, but God, who also has given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. 
And indeed, if you do so toward all, brethren, who are in all Macedonia, but we urge you, brethren, that you should increase more and more, and that you should also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work out your own hand, work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. May lack nothing. Sanctification, without sanctification, there are no restraints. Amen? But we should know how to possess our own vessel. If you're in that place where there's fellowship with the Spirit of God, he says, acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will establish your steps and thoughts. Amen? Again, we are in such tremendous days where there are no restraints. Don't get caught without your restraints. Amen? Or you'll be restrained. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect the seed that's been imparted into us. Let it penetrate every part of our being and bring to remembrance that we may see, that we may hear, that we may obey, and that we may execute those things you're requesting us to do in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.